place was built, you can see in 1857, it basically, be, well, they moved here in 1856. In 1857 it became a big building. It was just a log cabin. It was real small. Mm -hmm. And they seen that there was a need for some place for people to stop. It, there were stages coming by here, coming from Fort Dodge and going up north. And they seen that need for people to have a place to rest and maybe get some nourishment. And so they started to build on this place over the years and it became as it is. It was a hospital, it was a post office, it was a courthouse, it was a school. It was obviously a inn and a uh, community room where the community would come together and, and gather and find out the news of the day, you know, for the, for the, for the month. Um, Judge Moore had been in the position that he was in, he was always in contact with other people of seniority, so to speak. Mm -hmm. And he would learn a lot about the war and things like that, civil war primarily. And he would come to here and gather and get news. I mean, that, that, was, mm -hmm. that was Facebook at that time. That's the Native American burial tree. It sits right there. This right big, the this big that's oak? The big, the big oak. Okay. That's where they would bury their dead. Now, we know for a fact that there was dead there because Martha Moorhead and her daughter Anna used to have little pickets around that tree. Well, they started discovering all these little beads, big beads, small beads, little beads, and what they determined was is when they would bury, of course, the, the body would start to decompose and it fall apart and the beads and, and stuff would begin falling off and they just started congregating it around the ground. And Martha took all those beads and she made moccasins for the kids, or at least for Anna. Mm -hmm. So how long have you been uh, coming to the stagecoach? Myself, about the last four years. Okay. I've probably done 70 to 100 investigations. Mm -hmm. And every time I come here, it seems like there's something else that happens. I just can't wrap my head around. I'll walk away from here with more questions and answers. Mm -hmm. Every time I think I have a handle on it, mm -hmm. something else happens. So I just can't figure it out. Um, there were some things that happened here in the previous investigation that were just different from what's ever happened before. This was the original size of the, of the first cabin. Oh, pretty they tiny. Left this, they left the ceiling open to show some of the rough cut timber that they they, they did, mm -hmm. just so you could see that it's all original. If you look at the floor, the floor is not falling apart. These are actually axe marks and hatchet marks. When in those winters that were so brutal in the 1800s, if it was too cold outside to split wood, they'd come in here and split it. they put it in a wood burning stove. Mm -hmm. When people would come on the stage, they would take all the furniture out so they had a place to sleep. But they'd also bring in the livestock, pigs, chickens, whatever, because there were so many Sioux around here that they were afraid that they were concealed during the night. Mm -hmm. So the people that came through on the stage sometimes had to sleep with an old pig. <laughs> this yoke with the bells on it belonged to Giles Moorhead. Now Giles was Judge Moorhead's son. He went on to be a doctor. And the story has it that whenever he was doing his rounds in the prairie out here with his buggy, that he would stop and he would get off his buggy and he would take these bells and he'd shake them and ring them so his mother Martha would know that he was okay and he was in the area. One night we asked a question to Giles if he was okay, if he could ring these bells, and about 35 minutes later he did hear these bells ring. Oh, cool. Okay. That's the original post office. This is the kitchen area. This is where Martha would have entertained and fed the guests that came. And they had a meal in the afternoon, and probably a meal in the morning, and probably a lunchtime. Mm -hmm. It also served as the first hospital. Um, this is the original table to the inn. And you notice it's really long. That worked out really well when they did surgery on that table for frostbite. They would hold the unwilling recipient down and they would cut off their limbs, whether it be toes, fingers, feet, hands, mm -hmm. whatever. But there were surgeries done on this table and there were amputations. So, you know, I can't say what kind of residual energy is remaining on this table sure. or in this room for that matter. Yeah, There's yeah. some interesting things going on in here. I've got a lot of millimeter hits, you know, EVPs. Um, um, lights come on here in the middle of the night in this room. Mm 
mm-hmm. or call the insane lights on. Get out here on or it is on. But this is yeah, for a cool room to investigate. Mm-hmm. Now take in mind that most, I'm gonna say ninety five percent of what's in this house has been donated from other people. Mm-hmm. So what kind of residual energy is hanging on to those items, I don't know. So there could be a variety of oh, sure. of, of energy not only that, but you have thousands of people that came through this place carrying not just baggage, but baggage. Mm-hmm. And you don't know what their intentions were. Good, evil, right. just wanting to move on to another life. Who knows? So they revered this place very much. I thought it was a great place to be. And they're just hanging around. I don't know. That's something we're still trying to figure out. Mm-hmm. The men's room, they call the men's room. This is where the men would sleep at night. They were segregated from their wives. Even if they were married, they had to be set apart. They would have buffalo skin rugs and throw them down on the floor, and this is where they would sleep at night. This room also would have served as the armory. The walls would have had a lot of firearms on. There would have been powder cases. There. there would have been wad. There would have been lead shot. There would have been all kinds of things in the event that there would be an attack. And Judge Moorhead had no reservations to go outside when Indians came around and would boast his, his weapons. Um, he would let them know that this was a well-armed location. Mm-hmm. Just to hope that they didn't want to have that confrontation and they would move on. Although there was one Indian war chief, his name was Chief Padilla, and he is thought to be instrumental in the Spirit Lake Massacres. Um, he would frequent this place quite a bit and would come by. And he thought everything in his land belonged to him. One day he just walked into the kitchen door and he found Martha sitting at the kitchen table. And Martha was fussing over a piece of blue silk linen. And she was going to use that linen to make a dress for Martha. He just grabbed it. And, and she, this is her right here, she was a little short hair, red hair, Irish woman. And she, Try to back fire. Back <laughs> and try to pull it back away from him, but heck, he was like 6'6". Six, six. He was a big buck. Mm-hmm. And he finally just took it away from her. He draped it over his head. He walked out the door and he threw it off the his That's the kind of person that he was. Mm-hmm. As far as he was concerned, this house belonged to him and everything in it. So they were always on the lookout for people. This is the community room. This is where people would have gathered. This is also at the church. They had church services. They more than likely also had burials in this room. Um, anything to do with the county happened. Um, I was standing approximately right here uh, four years ago. It was like my third investigation. Didn't really ever find anything. I had a ghost meter sitting on that glass case. I had a digital recorder on that chair. And I had a camera with audio in the doorway. And I just asked the question at the, you know, the house, or I guess I made the statement, I guess, that the house was essentially flat. There was nothing going on. I mean, my meters weren't reacting to nothing. Mm-hmm. And it was cold. It was October. I had a coat on. And something jerked on the back of my coat. And it was hard enough that I actually spun around. And I thought, I thought maybe I'd snag into something. But there was nothing there to, to grab me like that. And I asked the question if there was somebody in this house. And after reviewing the digital recording, there's a child that says, yeah, uh uh-huh, me. And it just clears a bell. And it sounds like it comes from that staircase. Mm -hmm. This is the judge's quarters. This is where he would have ruled all his proceedings, I guess. Um, He didn't do a lot of criminal law. It was mostly, it was about the land, who owned what. This would have been the classroom area. I had caught this spinning wheel turn. Um, not like that either. It was... It just was going to town? And it just stopped. And we caught it on video. But we had a lot of activity in this room also. Lots. People get their hair pulled and touched. This is where the women would have stayed at. I know. I'm <laughs> um, they, 
like I said, they were segregated from their husbands, but this is where they would have stayed along with their children. We've got a lot of EDPs. Um, you can do anything you want in these rooms. We just ask you not to sit on the beds because mm -hmm. they're kind of fragile. These are original beds. Nice. This, this is a rope bed. Like it. Oh, wow. Oh, um, I never knew that they so used cool. the rope. That's yeah. kind of interesting. And they stuffed those with, like, whatever. Yeah, for sleeping, yeah this is like, feather, duck feather, like an oversized or... pillow. It would have been stuffed with feathers, and that, and that would have been your sleeping arrangement. Yeah. Now, and you notice how these windows are so close to the floor? Yeah. You could have laid down practically and fired your weapon in case any attack. And it, the chances of you being injured were minimum. Yeah. Look at this little tiny bed. Wow. <laughs> my, ne yeah. my nephew had a bed like that. And I used and to that was all done. This is all donated. So again, you know, mm -hmm. we got beds in here. These yeah. are beds that belong to people. Beds That's have right. a lot of memories, folks. Mm -hmm. sure. I mean, good and bad. Right. So there could be a lot of residual attachment in one of these beds. This is another room that the guests would have stayed in. Um, this is actually a room. It's a cubby. It's a, a hiding place for the children. Sure. If, if any attack would come, they would shuttle them in there and they would take a dresser like that and they would move it in front of them. This is another small room yeah. that guests would have stayed in. The taped area would have indicated walls. Now I'm wonder, okay, <laughs> what's this over here? Here's the walls. You can't get to it. Well, you can. This doorway here. This was a stagecoach director's room. There would have been a ladder outside this wall outside. Mm -hmm. They would have slept in here during the night, and then early in the morning before everybody got up, they would go down the ladder, they'd go to the bar, and they'd pitch the team and get ready to move out. Mm -hmm. Then they'd be breakfast with guests. But they too were more or less kind of segregated from all the visitors. Mm -hmm. So where does that door go now? Is it just it, behind it, a wall? It, or? It, just, it, just open, it doesn't even open up to the outside anymore. they got a sealed off. Sealed off. Okay. Just there. curious. Yeah. Um, but I've had interesting conversations with the stagecoach drivers just asking general questions like it must have been a very perilous journey. You know, knowing that there were thugs out there, there were Indians out there. And I've got some amazing K2 and no meter responses. Down the hallway would have been Anna's room in here. That was the one daughter. And then this would have been Morgan and uh, Judge Moorhead's room, John Moorhead. Um, the reason we know this is his room is because his window faces the barn. He had a bell tied to the doors, and it came up to the house, and so if something would happen, he could hear the bell ring, he could look out and see if somebody was out mm -hmm. messing with his livestock. This isn't their bed, but Judge Moorhead did pass away in this room. There was one individual by the name of John Moore, no relation, that one day just got up to do his breakfast, went outside to feed his livestock, got on his horse, rode about less than 300 yards away from here on the ridge, hung himself. He found a note in his pocket and said it was all for the best. He belonged to a group called the Odd Fellows. Mm -hmm. Now the Odd Fellows believed in the reincarnation at that time. Mm -hmm. It is thought, it is known, that he had criminal charges proceeding against him, but we know what they were. But evidently it was traumatic enough that he felt he needed to kill himself. Yeah. Mm -hmm. So did he think he was going to come back? I think he comes back, but I think he comes back and he lives those moments up to his death constantly, mm -hmm. constantly. And he does get a little grumpy, especially when you're talking about a suicide and how the county didn't give him a stone. He doesn't have a stone. Mm -hmm. He's just buried because he's up to suicide. You're going to hear and feel and see a lot of stuff. Um, there are times when this place is really heavy and it's really hard stuff that just kind of holds on to you here. I don't know what it is, but I had to actually step back and get away from it for a while because there's just something about this place that just hangs on to you. I don't know what it is. I've had things come home with me. Not bad, right. but for a few days I feel really lethargic and sick and just almost like I've, I've been out on a bender for a week and I just can't pull it together and I feel almost depressed, just yuck, and then it'll just start going away, and I really haven't had a problem with that in the past year, so if that has something to do with paranormal activity in here, I don't know, I think so, and I think, it it's, like I think it's John Moore, that's my own opinion, because mm -hmm. uh, the Moorheads were very embracing people, in fact, the last people that were here, uh, 
Angelique, she came down the stairs to do an interview with her. She said she could send somebody here that was offering uh, fresh baked bread. The last investigator that was in here investigating, he comes to me and he says, Do you smell that? And I go, smell what? He says, I smell bread. Cooking. So those things, thing, excuse me, those two things have something to do with each other? I don't know. Yeah. Doc Kenny, uh, he was a, a veterinarian by trade. Um, he also, well, here 13 years ago, I married into a family. And uh, I gained a nephew. And I come to find out that his nephew was Doc Kenny's grandson. Well, I came out here one day just to be peace during the daylight hours. And I asked the question, I said, Doc Kenny, you might know a new in-law that I have. And when I reviewed the EDP, you hear it say Andy. So I grabbed Andy, and I said, come on, you come here and listen to something. He put the headphones on. And he starts listening. I didn't, I didn't cue him on anything. Just let him listen. Mm -hmm. And you could just see the blood wash in his face. And those things said, that was Grandpa. And he was just as serious as said, that was Grandpa. So he like, used to like to sit in his chair, cross his legs, and smoke his pipe. Nice. You know, <laughs> when they were uh, doing the, the restorations of the house. One more thing I should tell you. This shoe was found in the walls of this house, along with this dress. If you know anything about shoes and walls, they used to do that in the 1800s. They would place shoes and walls around weak spots like doors, windows, chimneys. It kept evil out. The thought was it held the wearer's shape of his foot or his soul or his imprint. So you would put that in the wall and it would keep evil outside. Does that have to do with burial tree? I don't know. The dress was hung in the wall like that. Mm -hmm. It wasn't stuck in there to plug up a hole or anything. Right. That was thought to be an offering to whatever was there here and have this and see this alone. Mm -hmm. They would put coins, keys, um, Whole plates at dinner, just for an offering to whatever evil may have been working outside the house. Later, the whole shoe thing turned into what we know now as putting the horseshoe over the door. Mm -hmm. Okay, if anyone's up here, can you bring these two rods together? Just give them some force and then touch them together. Just push can them. Can I take the camera or my light off of them? Just get them real close, let them touch. No, I don't see rod believer, but you're kind of on place. Thank you. How about a man? Thank you. Sorry, that was my fault. Teresa wants to give this a try, so I'm going to give this to her so she can ask you some questions. I hope you're going to be okay with that. If you're okay with that, can you cross them? If you're okay if Teresa asks you a couple of questions? She's a nice lady. Can I do that? Thank you. Appreciate it. Thank you. I'm going to give these over to her. Did you live here? Cross Did you live it. here? Can you cross them? Thank you. Thank you. Can you feel the movement? Yeah. <laughs> the energy. That, that is so awesome. cool. Oh my gosh. Um, did you have children here? Can you uncross them? If you had children? You, you did have children. Was it a little girl child that you had? Can you cross them back if it was a girl child? Did you have a little girl? Yeah. Thank you. That's awesome. Did you have a lot of guns here? Oh, I can see you do it. Oh, there we go. Can you uncross it just a little more? Both sides, maybe? That's good. good That's, did you have a hard life? Was it hard? Hard being alive in your time. You had to work hard and stuff. Yes. Yeah. I thought so. That would have been hard tough. life, I bet. Did you pass away in this house? Can you cross them? If you passed away in this house, cross them. 
You're doing a good job. Thank you. Yeah, thank awesome. You. Thank, you. thank you. Appreciate it. Do you it. die from a natural cause? Cross them if yes. Yes. Are you glad Martha's here with you? Are you happy being here together? Uncross them if you're happy being together here. Do you know that you've passed away? Can you cross that? If you know you were passed away, cross. You're doing a good job. Thank you. What? <sighs> you made me jump. What happened? Jill, I was walking and it felt like something went like on the back of my knee. Like it, So that wasn't your knee giving out? No, it was just walking and I stepped forward like I stepped forward this fit this foot and then I went it was straight into this one. I went to take this step forward. And I saw your knee like come forward like this. Yes, so I something thought... just went like not hit like and that, but like pushed it. Were you trying to get my attention? You got our attention. Who's up here? I've got the chills all over again. Hello? How old are you? I can feel you guys up here. I was walking away from the cubby area, second step forward, and uh, something pushed my knee forward. Um, I felt like my, my, I almost fell forward. So I just wanted to document that happened. Was it you that pushed my knee forward? Was that you? <coughs> Can you cross them if that was you? Do you know if it was a child? Was it a child? Can you cross them if it was a child? Yeah, I think it was a child, yeah. Are they pranksters? They like to play jokes and have fun? Can you uncross them if that's what they were doing? Thank you. <laughs>
John Moore, John, is, is there anything that you want to tell us about yourself for these young ladies tonight? Why you killed yourself? Did you kill yourself because you were depressed? Was there something that depressed you? And Oh, yes. I've seen that. It's nothing that happened. It's just that you were depressed. Is that right? Make that go off again. Okay. Nobody could help you back then, so that was your only idea. Make that go off again if that was your idea to yourself to commit suicide. Yes? Are you afraid to move on? Yes? Yes? Maybe you didn't like Abraham Lincoln. Is that why you scratched her? Because she's part of the legacy? Ooh. Okay, we want to hear John's real voice on the spear box. Can you do that for us? <laughs> President Lincoln? Teresa. Teresa.